Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your unconditional love. Amen. We thank you, King of Kings. The word of God says his mercy, his mercy endures forever. The greatest demonstration of God's mercy was through the person of Jesus Christ. It was through his son dying for our sins, dying for our transgression. Remember, the word of God says Jesus Christ died for all sins, for all sins. Now let us come to the throne of men. Our God is healer, awesome and power. Our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. of the word of God. 
I'm going to hand over to my man of God, my father, my pastor, Pastor Makani, to introduce our grandfather. Amen. Days of glory. Indeed, you shall remember today. You shall remember these days. You shall confess and testify. It's happened during the days of glory. The Bible says the end of everything is better than the beginning. You started and now we are lending. Hallelujah. Oh my God. And then we are lending with my father, your grandfather. Who is going to... We said yesterday that you're not going to lend down. We're, lend, we're going to lend up. Our airport is up. We're going to lend up. Hallelujah. So I am going to invite Pastor Theo. Rise up on our feet and let's give Jesus a, a round of applause. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise Jesus. Shall we all stand uh, on our feet at this moment? Uh, I just want to say thank you so much uh, to Reverend uh, Dr. I should have said Reverend Doctors uh, Roger and Chantal, my precious sons. I'm so much delighted by the progress that I see, you know, in the house. And um, in fact, it is because I look around, I see each and every one of you, uh, that I thank God for their lives and their response to the calling of God. We can recall of the early days of uh, burning Bush Bible Church. Um, uh, well, it started not here. Some of you look at this and think that this is where it started, but it did not start here. It started at the house in the veranda. In fact, uh, that day, uh, it was a great day for me because, you know, uh, many other people will be born under my descendants. And... Um, um, I celebrated the Lord by seeing those pictures and I still, you know, uh, cherishing them. Uh, not only that, there was a move into a very tiny, small place. Uh, that's where I preached for the first time. Uh, very tiny. When I say very tiny, um, I don't know how I can explain it. In fact, it was just like, uh, you see, this place over here. And for us to move even around, it was quite difficult. But today we are in a special place. Uh, we have not yet arrived. <laughs> we are still going uh, from glory to glory. And praise God for that. So I just want to uh, celebrate them and thank God for them. Uh, for us parents, you know, uh, when you have children who are honoring you, you don't have to take it for granted. There are some other children, when they grow up, they forget about their parents and they, they become big-headed. But when you have uh, people like them, the Lord has really blessed them. He has um, you know, lifted them in the ministry and they still know their roots. Well, you need to thank God for them. I always thank God for you. Uh, I always thank God for you. And uh, in fact, the Lord has blessed me with so many sons. Some of you don't know. You look at me as a young man. I am 63, turning 64 next year. Uh, well, I have been in the ministry. My first preaching, I did it in 1983 in September. Uh, so uh, you can imagine that I have had a long walk with the Lord up till today. So I, uh, I, uh, I, I can tell you things about God and things about the church. So, um, I, I am so grateful. Thank you so much for uh, honoring us. And we are not taking it lightly. My wife and I, we really appreciate you. We pray for you. And um, the more blessing that I, have, uh, I can testify today, it is meeting your two best friends and their wives. In fact, we have uh, bumped into each other's, you know, um, from time to time, but we have never met and sat down together. 
and particularly hearing them minister, minister, ministering. In fact, it has been a great blessing to me. And I thank God that you've got very good friends. Keep on nurturing the friendship and uh, keep on holding hands and uh, going forward. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Some of you might be wondering why are we still standing? You could have just said sit down. Well, I ask you to stand because I will be remaining standing alone for a long time. So I need some company. So please, that is the reason. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Um, great time that we are having here. Remember that we are saying days of glory, days to remember. Hallelujah. Now, it is not days that we are going to remember as if we are looking in a rear mirror and saying these days are behind of us. These are days that we are remembering because when we say days of glory, it means that it is a starting, a beginning of something. So we will be in the days of glory and remembering when it started during this conference. Now let us bow our heads and remain standing. We will be praying. Precious Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for the privilege of standing before your people this morning. Jehovah, we have not come here as uh, those who are standing on our own, but we are declaring that we are trusting in you and uh, waiting on you to speak to your people. Here is your people, O oh God, and they are here they are thirsty and hungry for more of you. And Jehovah, we are trusting that your Holy Spirit is going to speak through us. And your word, it is going to flow through us, O oh Father God. And you will give us an accurate understanding of the scriptures. As we share your word, let this word that we are receiving raise faith in our heart, O oh God, and dispel all doubt and unbelief. Father, we thank you that uh, in these days of glory, Jehovah, we want to see your glory, even when we are speaking, even when we are teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. In uh, our culture as a Bible church, we honor the word of God when it is read. So I've just asked you to sit down and I'll ask you again to stand. Hallelujah. Yeah. And which text are we going to take? It is uh, the very text that has been there for the whole conference, throughout the conference. That is Exodus chapter 33. We are reading from verse number 18 down to verse number 23. Now the Bible says... Uh, I'm reading from the ESV translation. It says, Moses said, please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face, for men shall not see my face and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face you shall not see. Amen to the word of God. Amen. You may be sitting in the presence of God. Sit down in the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Now, we just want to speak on this uh, very large topic. That is uh, the glory of God. And mostly we would like to dwell on this short prayer but a powerful one a very deep prayer made by a man of god that we know 
by the name of Moses. And we just want you to know that this particular passage, it is happening at Mount Sinai. It is happening at Mount Sinai. God had called Moses to come to Mount Sinai for an assignment. And the assignment was to give him the law, the tablets of law, so that the people who have just come out of Egypt, they did not know how to serve God, how to worship God, how to minister to God. So they needed guidance from God. And God had to write with his own finger on tablets of stones and give them to Moses so that he should you know, bring them down to the people as a way of guiding them on how they have to worship and serve God. Now, when Moses was at the mountaintop with God, something tragic was happening in the valley at the feet of the mountain. Well, Aaron, who was his assistant, he was under pressure from the people and they required from him that we are tired of waiting, so we need to go quickly into business. We want to have a God that we can see and touch like all the other nations. So under pressure, they made a golden calf, so a sort of God which was, according to their thinking, the God who was going to be closer to them. Just imagine these people have been taken out of Egypt by God. They were in slavery. They were in bondage. And it is God, the Almighty Yahweh, who delivered them from that particular slavery through the ministry of the man of God called Moses. So in other ways, they could have been respecting this man of God and believing in him because of what they saw him doing and what they saw God doing through him. But now they are rejecting him. They are rejecting his leadership. They are even rejecting the God who has taken them out of slavery. The God who has delivered them. The Lord who has blessed them. They were humiliated in Egypt. They were not considered in Egypt. And they knew that and they suffered from it. They called upon God and God sent a deliverer that was Moses. And he took them out of Egypt. And here they are now at Mount Sinai. And the man of God goes to meet with God. But upon his return, he is taken by surprise. He sees something horrible. The people that God has given him to lead, they have turned their back not only on him, but even on the God Almighty. So this is something that can break someone's heart, particularly when you know that you are called to put up with these people for a very long time because they had a long journey you not know, to go through. So Moses when he comes and he sees what was happening, well, he was troubled. He was depressed. He was low. He was down. How can it be that these people, after seeing all that God is doing for us, how God has led us out of Egypt, and here we are, we were not crushed by the army of the Egyptians. But these people, they are forgetting this God, this great God who has taken us out of all these things that we went through. It was shocking. And in fact, Moses in his righteous indignation, he did something. He broke the tablets. Now I want you to see the tablets. These were the tablets containing the Ten Commandments. So in other words, Moses broke all the commandment at once. Now imagine that when you are guilty of just one offense against the ten laws, you are already guilty of them all. But him, he broke all of them at once. 
Now, to my human mind and the way that we see pe people, I, I, I could have thought that this was going to disqualify Moses. God was just going to say, no, no, I need someone else, not this guy. Because he has broken ten of my laws at once. But God, who is such a merciful God, Amen. God who is such a loving Father, He did not decide, well, I am going to drop Moses and find myself someone else. Now, I am saying this just to bring to the attention of someone in this place. You might feel like you are not a good Christian. You might feel like you do not fit in this crowd. But listen to me. God does not see you the way that you feel. But he sees you with the eyes of mercy and grace. Amen. And you might even think that God has rejected you and God will no, never use you. But I want you to know that as bad as you feel that you are, God is still able to use you. Amen. Because God, in fact, he is not looking for those who are qualified. But he is looking for those who are nobodies, those who are unknown, those who are rejected. And when you meet with this God, God will have to change your life. He will turn it around and you are going to become precious in his eyes and in his hands. So Moses was not rejected, even though he smashed the two tablets of the law. You see, it was a big challenge for Moses now. He has got to lead this, you know, stubborn people. And he is going to take them, you know, he does not even, you know, see how long it is going to be. And we now know that it was for 40 years. Now you have to put up with people who are rebellious, who are stubborn, and you will have to be with them for that long. So you need a special grace. You need something special for you to continue to lead this kind of people. Otherwise, you will give up. This is why I say that Moses was stressed. Moses was depressed. Moses was discouraged. He, he, he was wondering, what is going to happen with these people? How am I going to lead them? Now you too, because the word of God, it is sent to you. During these days of glory, the Lord is asking you, you might be as well in the position that Moses was. You might be facing a challenge at your workplace. You might be facing also an issue about your promotion at your workplace. Maybe you are having a problem in your family. And all these things, they are troubling your mind and they are disturbing your peace. But I want you to know that Moses as well had been at that particular place, at that particular position. He was also troubled. He was also discouraged. And he was also wondering, how am I going to lead these stubborn people? How am I going to take them forward, these people that God has given to me? Your challenge might not be a problem that you are facing in your family. Maybe it is simply you are about to make a very important decision. You are on the verge of deciding on something very important about your life and destiny. But you do not know what to decide. You do not know where to head to. And if you are in that particular situation, you are in need of guidance and direction. But you don't know which direction to take. Maybe it is in the business. You are wondering, Lord, you want me to, to be in business, but which kind of business am I going to start? Or maybe you are just wondering, which kind of studies do I have to take? So any direction or any problem that might be troubling your peace, I want you to know that you are not the first one to be there. There are people who had been there before you. And one of them is Moses. But when he found himself in that particular predicament, in that particular situation, he did something that I want you to learn to do. He turned to God. Most of us, when things are getting tough, we are turning to our parents. 
We are turning to our friends. We are turning to people that we think that they know. We are even turning to pastors. But first of all, you need to turn to God. And let God lead you to the pastor who is going to give you the solution to that particular problem. So in this particular situation, you know, with all that was happening around him and the trouble with uh, all the people who were stubborn, and this is how Moses decided, well, I am going to go to God. I am going to, to bow before God. I am going to recognize God, the God who answers prayers. And he came before God in prayer. In fact, what we are reading is, um, you know, show me your glory. It is not just a statement, but it is a deep, profound prayer made by a man who was in a situation that he really needed the glory of God to change or to turn things around. He could not lead these people without the glory of God. He could not. People were rebellious. They were rejecting him. And these were stubborn people. So he could not lead them. And then he said to God, he prayed to God asking, show me your glory. This is a deep spiritual prayer. This is a very deep spiritual prayer. Let me say something about deep. You know, I do hear people, you know, and mostly they are ignorant people. They always say, go deep, pa, pa, pa. Okay? Now, you, you don't have to go deeper in knowing where you live because you already know where you live. You don't have to go deeper in knowing your phone number because you already know your phone number. You don't have to go deeper into knowing, you know, your ID number. Because it is your ID number. You already know your ID number. Where you need to go deeper, it is in your knowledge of God. Not in hearing people telling you about things you know, that, you, that are obvious. And most of the time, these things are not even helping you. And we have heard people calling them prophecy. This is not a prophecy. And in most cases, these are divinations. Praise God. I don't know how I had to say it, but I've said it. Praise God. So, the challenge ahead of Moses was so big, was so huge, that he decided, for me to face this challenge, I need to run to God. I need to call upon God. And this is how he cried out to God saying, show me your glory. And this was at the beginning of his ministry. He knew that the, the wandering, you know, experience in the wilderness was still ahead of them. And he knew that I've got difficult people to deal with. When you have difficult people to deal with, be it in your family, be it at your workplace, wherever you meet difficult people to deal with, I entreat you, seek and call upon the glory of God. Pray the prayer of Moses and desire the glory of God to be manifested. Because when the glory of God is manifested, you will see that there will be a wind of turnaround that is going to happen in your life. Praise God. So he asked that he wanted to see, to experience God more and experience more of his glory. So meaning that as we are here as Christians, we need to have that deeper you know, desire of understanding the greatness of the glory of God. It must be in us. We need to be walking with that desire. You need to be walking, asking for more of God. You need to know him more. 
There is still more to know about God. I have worked with God for all these many years, but I am telling you openly that there is still more to know about Him. Yeah. Now, one very uh, simple testimony that I can give to you, that even though I have worked with the Lord all these many years, I am telling you that every time when I am about to stand and deliver the Word of God, I always feel that I am not ready. Inadequate. In fact, it is only when I open my mouth that all the confidence comes in me. And by the way, even my English gets better when I'm at the pulpit. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that. You don't have to give me a compliment on that. I'm telling you. So when I stand behind the pulpit, and when I am out of the pulpit, uh, I've got two different kinds of English. Amen. And just to tell you that there is still more to know about God. Don't say that I have been in church for five years, ten years. I have been attending church since my childhood. I know God. No, you cannot know God. Not totally. You still need to know God. God will always uh, keep on revealing himself to you. Amen. So he is asking God, I want, to, I want to know you more deeply and more intimately. Now when we talk about knowing God more intimately, this is everything that we need to be desiring as Christians. Now, talking as well about the glory of God, I want you to see that it is the sum total of God's character. And his attributes, his perfection, and his being. I want you to get that. When we are talking about God's glory, we are talking about the uh, sum total of God's character. What is the character of God? If we just want to look into the character of God, well, we are not going to finish talking about it. If we want to talk about the attributes of God, well, we won't finish talking about them because every attribute, it is the way that God is manifesting himself, you know, to his people. You know, we know God as Jehovah Shammah, the Lord God who is ever present. We know him. Now, if we just want to deal with the presence of God, the permanent presence of God, it is an old sub subject that we, will, we cannot finish. But remember that God is not only Jehovah Shammah. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah Rapha. You know, but these are the attributes of God. Now, when we talk about the glory of God, it is all these put together being manifested at once. Meaning that when the glory of God is in a place, God is manifested in all his attributes. So if you have come with an issue that your peace has been troubled by so many issues that you are facing, maybe you have come because you have got a sickness in your body that does not go away, or maybe you have come because you have got a relationship issue. I want you to know that when the glory of God is there, it simply means that it will cover every aspect of life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, I want you to see this. That this man Moses that we are talking about, he is asking for the glory of God. Now, yet remember that Moses had already seen great things through you know, the power of God at work in his ministry. He is a man who stood at the holy ground. I thank God that we are at the burning bush Bible church. So he stood at the burning bush. He had a personal experience which, you know, you cannot explain. The bush, it is on fire, but it is not consumed. And he heard a voice. So this is what we call an encounter with God. I think this is enough for this man to say, well, because of the experience that I've had with God, well, I will stop there. And this is where so many people in the church, so many Christians are stopping. One experience with God, and they believe this is the end. 
it is not the end. Moses did not only stand on the holy ground, he did not only you know, uh, stand you know, at the burning bush, but we know that he also saw a, the pillar of cloud that led the Israelites you know, uh, when they left Egypt. That was a, also a miracle. You, know, you just wake up you know, in the morning, you saw a cloud, and the cloud is leading people. It is enough to blow your mind. It is enough for you to say, well, I am happy. I have seen God. I see God at work. He had so many other experiences. He saw God parting the Red Sea. And this is a great miracle. Well, it was not a river, but it was a sea. If it was a river, we could have, you know, thought of it and say, well, well they, they could have, you know, because it was not so deep. But this is the sea. He saw God parting it in two. And making a way for the Israelites, for them to cross over. So this was a great miracle. So he saw great things. But he was not satisfied that what I have seen is enough. And my brother, my sister, I want you to know that God has called you for more of him. So you don't have to stop where you are. You don't have to think that you have arrived. I have not yet arrived regardless of how many years I have been in the ministry. You can ask my wife, I will spend time reading the word of God, listening to other men of God, and studying the word. You, there, there will never be a time that you say, no, 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 now that I have become a professional Christian. No. You are a disciple of Jesus and you are remaining a disciple through your whole life. Amen. Praise God. And a disciple is a learner. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Moses saw so many great things. He also saw water gushing from the rock. Where the water could not come. You know, just imagine a rock you cannot, you cannot see water coming from. You can see water coming from the ground, not from a rock. Now, this was enough for Moses to say, no, no, God, um, I have seen it all. This is how we do talk, you know, in, in good English. I've seen it all. No, you have not seen it all, brother. There is still more to see. You, you still need to see more. And ask for more, God will show you more. Amen. Talking about the glory, remember that God wants his, the knowledge of his glory to cover the face of the earth. Just like the water is covering the surface of the sea. So we are to spread the glory of God. Wherever we go, we need to take the knowledge of the people must come to the understanding and the knowledge of the glory of God when we are going around. So at your workplace, in your family, I want you to be praying this prayer and asking God, show me your glory, Lord. Let the people around me see your glory, Lord. Let my brothers and sisters in my family see your glory, Lord. Those that are working with me, Jehovah my God, I want you to show your glory through my life. So this is a prayer that you need to pray. Because Moses, in, in spite of all that he had already seen, he is still praying, God, show me your glory. This is a holy passion. And to have this passion, holy passion, a burning passion within Moses. He wants to know more of the holiness of God. Praise God. This is what we need to be desiring. Otherwise, we will remain stagnant. And Moses did not want to be stagnant. And he knew that without the glory of God, I will be stagnant and I won't be able to lead these people where God is taking them.
So he want to know more of the sovereignty of God. He want to know more because there is still more when we say that he's sovereign. And you know that no one has voted him. He is God by himself. That's why he is the king of kings. And most of the time people think that when we say king of kings, we are referring that he is the king over the other kings, the earthly kings that we know. No. But he is referring to you and me as king. So he is king reigning over us as kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when Moses asks that he wants to sh God to show him his glory, he is asking that, Lord, I want not only more of your holiness, but I also want more of your sovereignty, more of your power. I want all of that, more of your grace in my life. So the glory of God, it is bigger than what your eye can see. So when you are asking for the glory of God, you are praying a very deep spiritual prayer. So Moses cannot remain, you know, where he was with the experiences that he had and continue to lead the people of Israel and take them where God has called them to be. He must have an experience with God, more of experience with God in his life. And this is why he is crying out and praying, God, show me your glory. Now, I want you to know that the reason why God has called you here during these five days of glory, this is a holy convocation. Amen. The Lord has called you and me so that we can be awakened. He wants to wake us up. To wake us up to the fact that we need to be asking for more of God's glory in our lives. So this must become our prayer. We need to be desiring this at all times. Whenever we wake up in the morning, our prayer must be as I go into this day, Lord, I need your glory. Show me your glory. Now, this desire, it is not an option, but it is a must. Every one of us, you need to be thinking and calling upon the Lord and asking for the Lord to reveal his glory to you. You must know and experience God more in your life. You, you, you need to spend more time. How do you experience more God? Well, it is not, you know, by sitting down and, and going deeper into people telling you that your mother is a witch, your uncle is a witch, and then you say, go deeper. No, 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 don't go deeper in these kind of things. Go deeper in your personal relationship with God. Don't hate people because they are witches. Let them fear you. Do not fear them. In your prayers, bind them. Destroy their works. As you do, they are destroyed. And every night before you go to bed, call upon the name of the Lord and cover your house with the blood of Jesus. And speak to the blood of Jesus and say, blood of Jesus, speak on my behalf. Blood of Jesus, work on my behalf. Silence every demonic voice. That is trying to do any demonic work in my house. As you pray such a prayer, go to bed. Even when you hear a cat, you know, making noise outside, don't wake up. Even when you see any funny bird, you know, flying over your house, don't be troubled. Because you are already covered with the blood of Jesus. So you don't have to go deeper into knowing who hates you. They are already in trouble because those who hate you as a child of God, they are already in trouble with God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you need to go deeper in knowing the character of God. 
That's why I love the announcement I heard yesterday in this house about Tuesday. Bible reading club. You know, these kind of meetings, it is not really attended. When, when you hear it's prayer meeting, no, 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 no. When you hear it's uh, 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 Bible reading clubs, no, 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 no. I have got this and that to do. You are making a big mistake. So if you want to become powerful, you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You need to be rooted in the word of God. Amen. Come on, are you still listening to me? Amen. You need to be rooted in the word of God. And I mean deeply rooted. Talking about the glory of God being his character, his attributes, and his holiness, and his being, who is God. You, you cannot put God in a box and control him and say that I know God's being. You can't. God is so big. In fact, we have been singing here to show the, the greatness of our God. How big is our God? He's such a big God that you cannot control him. You cannot put him in a room and close it. You cannot put him in a box and control him. God is so big that every time when you are coming to him, he will always manifest you know, a, a, a side of his that you have never seen before, that you have never known before. That is God. So this prayer must be a priority number one in our lives. God, show me your glory. This is the prayer that you need to be praying at all times. It must be on your lips. It must be in your mind. When you are praying, you need to pray this prayer. Before you pray, say, Lord, as I pray, Jehovah my God, I need, I need you to show me your glory. Even when you are worshipping, in the middle of the worship, talk to God. You know, we know that this is a time that we are admiring the beauty and the holiness of God. But it is also time to let him know, Lord, what I'm seeing is your beauty. What I'm seeing is your majesty. I, there is still more. As I worship you, reveal your glory to me. In any situation that is troubling you, any situation... That is really, you know, disturbing your peace. I want you to know that the prayer to pray is ask God for him to show you his glory. Amen. 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 Now for you to see the glory of God, you must be in the passionate pursuit to know the glory of God. Are you still with me? Yeah. No one with a casual attitude with God ever grow to know him deeply. You cannot know God deeply if you are not spending more time with him. How do you spend more time with God? I'm glad you asked. Here is the answer. You are spending more time with God by spending more time with his word. How much of the word is in you? How, how many, many minutes do you spend in the word? I'm not asking many hours, but how many minutes? When last did you open your Bible? You know that some, I'm not prophesying it, it's the truth. And it is a fact, and I can prove you, that if there is an honest person here, he, we will have more than 10 people lifting up their hands. Do you want me to check? Why? Okay. Well, this is the fact. I know for sure that in this house, there is a person who only opened his Bible throughout this week, only when he came to church. Am I talking uh, to somebody? Yeah. Now, tell me, if you spend all the time watching Mubango, uh -huh, and what else? Days of our life, is it finished or is it still on? Still on up till today. My God. Is it new or the old ones? I want to know. Please help me. New. New. Okay. Ah, oh, my God. Now, just tell me. 
If you are spending all your time having intimate time with Mubango, with days of our lives, not only that you go on Facebook before even talking to God. I'm on Facebook. And I post almost every day. But I don't go on Facebook unless I have been in the presence of God and spoken to God. And when I go on Facebook, it is to announce what God is doing in my life. Amen. Amen. But you are spending most of your time on futile things. It is not improving your life. It is not bettering you in any way. But you are still attached to these things. Now this is the time that you could have been seeking for the face of God. The time that you should be praying and asking God for his glory to be revealed to you. But you are wasting this time by doing things which are not even helping anybody. Not even you. Now, when Moses prayed this prayer, I just want you to see that God gave him a favorable response. He says, yes, you are asking for my glory, that's fine. But what I love the most is that when God is speaking to him, he says, I myself, meaning that he is not going to send an angel, you want to know about my glory, I will teach you about my glory myself. In fact, he says, I will proclaim my name. Now, proclaiming the name, it simply means that I am going to preach to you my name. So when you want to know the glory of God, you are asking for God to teach you about his name. You know, sometimes we sing songs and we need to be explaining those songs. We say, his name is great. Sometimes we don't understand what we are saying. We, we think that it's just the word great. No, it means that it is so huge that it needs time for you to get around it. Just the name of the Lord. Imagine that the word of God says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. So it is a place of protection. It is a place of defense. When we are talking about, you know, the name, and here God says, listen, you want to see my glory? Well, I, myself, I will stand on the pulpit, and I will preach to you the Lord. Who is the Lord? Don't say, I know the Lord. You need to know him more. You need to go deeper into the knowledge of God. He says, I myself will make my goodness pass before you. So, what you have asked, I am going to give to you. You want my glory to be revealed to you, it is going to be given to you. You want a greater understanding of me as your creator. Moses, I am going to answer to that request by myself. I want you to know that the greater must allow himself to, may, to be made known to the lesser. So it is God who is going to allow himself to be known to you. It is not you who will know God to the measure that you think that you, you, you need to know him. God will apportion a measure of the knowledge of his glory that you can take. If he reveals everything about his glory, you cannot take it. Praise God. Amen. He has received the affirmation from God that uh, he is going to have the answer to his prayer. And this is not the only person who has asked for God's glory. And in fact, when we are studying about him asking or praying this prayer, it is in fact to stimulate us as well, so that we can be praying this prayer. We need this prayer. And God himself is always revealing to you according to his grace. 
It is by the grace of God that God is going to reveal himself to you. Remember the apostle Paul says that I am who I am by the grace of God. It is, all by, it is not because of Moses that he was such a special person. Because you can disqualify yourself thinking Moses was such a great man. Me, I am nobody. How is God going to show me his glory? No. He showed him and I've told you. It, is, it was right after him, you know, breaking ten laws. And God is still going ahead and allowing him to see his glory. So you need to ask for the glory of God. Praise God. So there is nothing in Moses that made him to be qualified to ask or to pray that prayer. Now if there is nothing that qualified him, so you too, you can be qualified to ask the very same prayer. Don't look down upon yourself. In fact, this is a lie that the enemy will always bring to you. He will always belittle you. He will always want you to see yourself as a nobody. You will always be talking that, you know, you are not important. Yet your value, it is not determined by your degree, by your diploma, by your, you know, you know your qualification. As you are here, I want you to know that your value is determined by the price paid by our Lord Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. Amen. When the Lord sees you, the, the label that is upon your life, the price tag that is upon your life, it writes blood of Jesus. Amen. Now I want you to know that the blood of Jesus, we call it precious. And now the word has become so diluted. That we don't even understand what it means precious. Oh, precious blood of Jesus. Precious blood of Jesus. But when we talk about something precious, it is something that you cannot find. For you to get precious stones, they are not on the surface of the ground. You need to dig, dig, dig deep until you get to what is precious. Now the precious blood of Jesus, it is the blood that cannot be compared to any blood. Because this is the only blood that is satisfying the anger of God against humanity living in sin. Amen. There is no other blood. So that is your price. That is your value. Now don't look down upon yourself and don't allow anybody to look down upon you and belittle you and, and, and tell you that you are nobody and you will amount to nothing. Listen to me. God has paid the price for you. He has bought you with a price. And that price is the blood of Jesus. Wherever you go, you need to know that you are accepted because God has accepted you because of the blood of Jesus. Praise God. So Moses, what he received, it was only because of the grace of God. You too, you can receive your request accepted by God because of God's grace. God says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion upon whom I will have compassion. So then, I want you to see, men should not stand and boast and say, well, it is because I am a pastor. It is because I went to university and I've got a degree. No. It has got nothing to do with the degree. It has got nothing to do with your intellectual knowledge. It has got all to do with the grace of God. Amen. By the way, it was not because of Moses, but it was in spite of Moses. So God overlooked his life as a human being. And I want you to know that God as well, when he looks at you, he does not look at your mistakes. Because some people are walking, you know, feeling, you know, just, you know, unworthy because of what they have done in the past. Listen, what you have done in the past, if you bring it at the cross of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, it is washing you. Well, God, they've got no remembrance of it. It does not remember. You will remember, people will remind you, but God has got no remembrance of sins that you've already confessed and which are already forgiven. The only sin that God cannot forgive, it is the unconfessed sin. 
So come to God. Don't run away from God. Don't say, no, I am a sinner. I can't see the glory of God. Come and repent from your sin and trust God to reveal his glory into your life. Praise God. Now, as we have been taught in the house that we need first to have a relationship with God, don't just ask for the glory of God without having a personal relationship with him. You need first to be born again. You need to make a decision that you, you need Jesus in your life. It is not something that anybody who is not born again can come and ask for God's glory. Now when I talk about you being born again, I'm not talking about you coming to church. Oh, yes. Coming to church, it is not being born again. Yeah. Even if the neighbors, they say, I oh, know uh, uh, that brother is a Mzalani and they go to a born again church. The church, it is a born again church. But everyone in the church is not born again. This is the reason why I want you to make sure. That you are making a personal you know, a, a decision to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and to receive him in your life. Not only as a, your savior, but make him Lord over your life. Praise God. So you need to enter into a saving relationship with God. Do you have a personal relationship with this God? Does he know you by your name? If he does not know you, make sure that you start from there. God says, you have asked for a deep thing, a good thing. But listen, I will put some restrictions. So I'm not going to give you everything on your terms. Because most of the time we want God to do things on our terms. The way that we want them. But God is God. He's above us. He will do things according to his own terms. Praise God. He puts restriction upon the request that Moses brought to him. He says, listen, I am not going to allow you to see the, the whole brightness, the whole light of my glory. But I am going to put you, you are going to stand on the rock. Now remember that the rock is Jesus. You are going to stand on the rock. So you need to stand, to be born again, to stand on the rock. You don't have to, have to be attending church and think that you are standing on the rock. You need to be born again to say, Jesus, I need you and I receive you in my life. So he says you are going to stand on the rock. Not only that, but if you stand on the rock, it is still terrible, still complicated. I need to make things easy for you. I am going to, 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 to make a, 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 a cliff. I'm going to make a, you know, a, a place in a rock so that I can hide you there. And when I put you in there, I will put my hand on it. Why? Because you cannot see my glory in its fullness and live. By the way, let me just explain this this way. Uh, it's not possible in this life. Listen to me. It is not possible in this life. In this body, in fact, in this body, this mortal body, to see the fullness of the glory of God and remain alive. So the same thing that, don't say because you are in the New Testament. I'm telling you, when God shows up, in fact, it, it happened as well to a man called John, you know, in uh, the island of Patmos. Yeah. He, he, he saw God. When he saw God, do you remember what happened to him? <laughs> so he, he was blind, blinded. He was slain. So when you see the, the full glory of God, you cannot stand. That's why when you ask, God will always show you some aspects of his glory. In fact, the full glory, we will see it when we will put up you know, the incorruptible body. Uh, with the eyes that can look into it and still remain open. 
Because there he will be our light. You see? And we will be able to see through the light of his eyes. But in this body you cannot see the full blaze of the glory of God and remain alive. In fact, when you, you, you have seen the full glory of God, then you know God in and out. And what is still remaining for you to learn? That's why you need to be either taken up to heaven or just die. So that you can go to heaven. So when you ask that prayer, you need to understand what is behind it. I have a wrong habit of never looking at the time when I start preaching. Now, but I need to be kept in check otherwise, you know, it's going to be whatever it's going to be. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now, we know as well somebody else who saw the glory of God. Remember Isaiah? The Bible says that when he saw it, what happened to him? Mm -hmm. In fact, he said, I am ruined. I am dead. I have seen God's glory. I have seen God's glory. I have seen the King of kings, the Lord of hosts. I am ruined. So you need to know what you are asking for. So when the Apostle Paul, I mean John saw that, he, he, he felt like a dead man. He was unconscious. Praise God. Amen. But God says, there is a place in me. Yeah. Moses, you, 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 you will be in me. Jesus, the rock. There is a rock. And the rock is Jesus. So he says, you, I found a place in me as the rock where you are going to be. You will be in me. And now you are in Christ and Christ is in you. Amen. 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 And that is why you are receiving the revelation of his glory. Moses had to hide in a rock. And the rock was to shield him from you know, the glory, the passing glory. Otherwise, he was just going to die. God covered him with his uh, hand. And he, he did hid him in the rock. Now, one thing that I like it is that um, you see now the glory, the glory passes uh, passes and God uncover, you know, uh, the place where he did hide, you know, Moses. And what is happening, he says, now you can uh, see my back. Amen. Now, as we have said, you can see the face of God, but, you know, Moses had an experience to see the back of God. He could not see the full blaze of the glory of God. He, it had to pass first and then he was going to follow after the glory of God. Now, this is also something that I want you to know that you need to let God to go ahead of you and to walk in front of you. Don't go before God's time. Don't rush and go ahead of God. Allow God to walk in front of you and follow in the footsteps of God. And when you are walking in the footsteps of God, you cannot get lost because He is the way. So you are walking in the way. Praise God. I think we can uh, take some time and pray. Uh, have you learned something? Or do you still want to learn more? No, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. I want you to raise your voice and start talking to God. Tell God, God, I am desiring to see your glory this morning, this day, today, this noon. Come on, talk to him. Say, God, I am desiring to see your glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Jehovah, by your mercy, by your grace, reveal yourself, oh God, in their situations. Reveal yourself, oh God, in their problems. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the powerful name of Jesus. Rasta kaya makurumusanta. Marebe. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Put your left hand upon your chest.
Say, Father, Father, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Locate me. Locate me. Let your glory locate me now. Let your glory locate me now. That is enough as a prayer. Just keep your eyes closed. And the glory of God is going to come upon you. It is coming with a solution. Solution to that problem. Solution to that issue. Yes, it is now. The glory of God it is in this place. It is coming upon your life. It is coming upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your glory move from the left to the right. Let your glory move from the front to the back. And you need God, you know, to show you His glory. Meaning, you need to see a turnaround in your life. This is the time that we want you to come forward. The men of God will be ministering to you and we will be praying and trusting God for His glory to be manifested in the life of each and every individual. Thank you that we are standing at this altar calling upon the name of the Lord. Yes, your people are standing, oh God, not before a man, not before a human being, oh God, but they are standing before you and they need, oh God, to see your glory. Not the glory of a human being, but your glory, oh Lord. Show them your glory in the name of Jesus in every situation, oh God. Thank you, oh Lord, your glory. Thank you, Jesus. All over you. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive it. Receive it. My robot so far Thank you, Lord. Don't fight. Just receive it. Don't fight. Just receive it. Don't fight. Just receive it. It is yours. Don't fight. Just receive it. It is yours. Every minute. Don't fight. Just receive it. Don't fight. Just receive it. It is yours. God's glory. There it is. There it is. It's all over you. It's all over you. It's all over you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. Oh, yes. You are hungry for more. There it is. There it is. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There it is. Just take it. Take it. Help it down. Help it down. Help it down. Don't fight. Don't fight. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there it is. You want more? There it is. There it is. There it is. You want more? Take it. Take it. It's yours. There it is, there it is. Yes. God has found a hungry person. Just receive it. Receive it. It is yours. It is yours. Help it out. Help it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. Oh, yes. Don't fight. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. of the Lord in the name of Jesus. You are entering in the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. We are not telling you the magogic way just to make you happy. We are saying what God said we should say. And when we say the same thing with God, that is confession. When you say what God has said, you are not afraid of being into shame. Because the Bible says that God is always behind His word to make sure that each and every one of them come to pass. God will be there to make sure that whatever I promise you come to pass. So you are blessed. You are finished. The Bible says the end of everything is better than death. So because we are finished, I release upon your life the blessing of the end in the name of Jesus. I release upon your life the blessing of the end in the name of Jesus. Remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He stood up on the last day and he said, If somebody is thirsty, he should come and drink. 
if somebody is thirsty, you should come and drink. The Bible said the last day, the great day. So it looks like before God, the last day, the great one. So I declare, in this last day, the great day, you shall receive according to your container. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, according to that container that you brought, uh, you shall receive it uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Are becoming easy, things are becoming in order, things are becoming organized for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because during these four days, the Lord was beyond the scene, making everything to work for you. So today, I am giving you that gift that the Lord has been working, that the Lord has been fashioning for you. Receive that gift this, this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, receive that gift in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare that it will take the form of your need. Just like water takes the form of any container which you receive it. I declare that the blessing of the Lord you are receiving this morning is taking the form of your container in the name of the Lord Jesus. Is taking the form of your container in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare and decree no more crying. No more crying. The songs of joy are coming back in your life. The songs of joy are coming back in your family. The songs of joy are coming back in your business. The songs of joy are coming back in your marriage. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hey, uh, hey, 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 h